Isa pong mapagbalang araw sa ating lahat at isa pong uh, panibagong umaga, panibagong sigla ano, at panibagong buhay na pinagkalob sa atin ng Diyos. At ito po ang ating morning prayer at uh, welcome po mga kapatid sa ating uh, morning prayer. At uh, every gising is a blessing, every gising is a thanksgiving, and every gising is rejoicing in the presence of the living God. Our God is alive, He is not dead, He is the God of the living. At uh, purihin ng Panginoon dahil Siya ay buhay, sa tuwing tayo manalangin, Siya ay tumutugon, sa tuwing tayo ay dumudulog, Siya ay nakikinig sa atin. At sumasagot lalong-lalo na sa ating mga Langin. So, purihin ng Diyos at uh, welcome po sa ating morning prayer. As we, what we've uh, studied in our previous uh, uh, live streaming, so makita natin that uh, prayer, ang prayer po ay nag evolve you know, The prayer is also a progressive yung revelation nito. Because our God is a progressive God. So, dito makita natin na uh, prayer before is talking with God. So, yan po ang pinaka-basic na alam natin. And then, prayer, uh, nag increase uh, Prayer is connecting our spirit to the spirit of God. And then, a prayer is the breath of every believer. So, sabi natin, a prayerful Christian is a powerful Christian. A prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Lahat po nang ito ay tama. But as you, uh, as you move along, as you increase in your... Uh, capacity in your understanding of what prayer is all about. It is simply listening. Prayer is listening to the uh, voice of God. Prayer is listening to God's wonderful and powerful instructions. Ulitin ko muli yung isang uh, mananampalataya na nagtanong sa akin, Pastor, Kung uh, nakalagay sa Matthew chapter 6, bago pa tayo lumapit sa Diyos, eh, alam niya ng ating pangailangan. So, pwede hindi rin tayo mag-pray. Kasi alam niya na eh. So, actually, nung sinabi sa akin yun, medyo nagkaroon din ako ng uh, bubulay-bulay. Oo nga, no? alam na pala ni Lord. And that is why, pag tayo lumalapit, iba sinasabi na din pangailangan natin. Eh, at the back of my mind, oo nga, alam na ng Panginoon. And then one day, this revelation came to me that it is not uh, prayer is not just telling God what we need, telling God our situations, because He knew it already. But prayer is listening to God. And the Lord gave me that uh, scripture, you know, sa isang experience ni uh, Moses while he was on the mountain of God. Uh, ang Diyos po, God was the one who did the talking. And God was the one giving him instructions. And Moses, wala po siyang ibang sinasabi, kundi upo, opo, Panginoon, opo. Okay, go back there, go down, baba, mamaya maya, sabi naman, Lord, akyat ka rito. Moses just uh, follow God and listen to God. So, prayer is listening to God. True enough. Alam ng Diyos ang ating pangailangan, kaya kailangan nating manalangin upang marinig natin ang kanyang pagpatnubay, ang kanyang mga estratehiya, ang kanyang instructions upang tayo ay magiging accurate sa ating pagtupad at sa ating pagresolba sa mga sitwasyon, problema, o ano man na ating pagkadaanan. So, purihin ang Panginoon. So, sa mga sandaling ito, uh, patuloy po nating uh, i-advance ang kingdom ng Panginoon dito sa lupa. And I know one of the major reasons why the Lord still allow us to be here on earth because we will be part of the prime movers of the move of God, of the advancement of God's kingdom on earth. And another thing ho, na ating pong matuklasan dito at matututunan sa pananalangin natin, natuto po tayong magiging sensitive sa leading ng Panginoon at natuto tayong ma mapino, ma-refine ang ating uh, quality of obedience, even our loyalty to God. Kailangan lang humaba at kailangan lang lumawak ang ating pagkaunawa patungkol sa mga bagay-bagay patungkol sa Diyos, specifically in the area of prayer. So before we continue, I would like to invite you to join me as we come to God in prayer. Okay, as we come to Him, just believe, just receive, okay, believe. 
expect and receive what the Lord is about to release to you today. Ang ating reference dyan is Mark 11.24. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So just believe. Tatay po na nalangin. Believe. Then expect. Alam niyo, masarap umasa sa Diyos kasi pag sa Diyos ka umasa, kailanman hindi ka mabibigo. And receive. Sabi ito, palataya kayong ito'y natanggap na ninyo at matatanggap na ninyo. In the world, to see is to believe. In God, believe and you will see. Okay, so samahan niyo po ako sa pananalangin at ating i-release ang ating pananampalataya sa bawat deklarasyon at tanggapin naman natin ang pangungusap ng Diyos sa atin, sa bawat isa sa atin upang ang ating buhay ay magpiging uh, kalugod-lugod at lalakad tayo na mayroong katuwiran at kabanalan sang ayon sa pamamaraan at kalooban ng Diyos. Manalangin po tayo, Panginoong Diyos, Ama naming nasa langit. Maraming maraming salamat po sa panibagong buhay at lakas na inyo pong ipinagkaloob sa amin. Salamat na ang bawat araw ay isa pong regalo na kami ay magkaroon ng buhay. Yung bawat araw na masilayan namin at kami buhay pa ay isa pong dakilang regalo. Thank you for the gift of life. I pray that today in the name of Jesus, you will continue to speak to us. Give us clear and powerful instructions, lalong-lalo na sa aming mga iba't-ibang kinakaharap sa buhay. Some of us may be struggling in the area of the spiritual, others emotional, others financial, others physical, and even material challenges. Panginoon, sa mga oras na ito, dumudulog po kami sa banal mong trono, sa trono ng biyaya. Humihingi po kami ng habag at pagpapala, lalong-lalo na Panginoon sa pamamaraan, lalong-lalo na sa mga dapat naming gawin upang ang inyong uh, kalooban ang siya naming pananahanan at it siya naman naming susundan. Panginoong Diyos, maraming salamat po sa inyong kabutihan, sa inyong katapatan, at sa inyong pagbibigay ng lahat ng aming mga pangangailangan. Akin din pong tinataas ang lahat ng mga pastor kasama po ang kanilang pamilya, lalong-lalo na Panginoon sa kanilang pangangailangan spiritual habang sila naman ay nagpapagamit upang lalo pang mapatibay ang inyong mga anak sa kanilang pananampalataya. Dalangin ko na ang kanilang mga pangangailangan lalo lalo na sa kanilang mga araw-araw na pangailangan ito po, Panginoon, ay maipagkaloob sa kanila, O Diyos. Alam namin, Panginoon, na hindi mo kailanman, O Diyos, papabayaan ang iyong mga lingkot. Yan ang sinasabi ni David. Ako ngayon ay matanda na, simula bata at ngayon matanda na, wala pa ako nakitang isang lingkot ng Diyos na nagugutom maging ang kanyang mga anak na humihingi ng tinapay. Panginoon, salamat po sa mga pangakong ito na kung saan kaming mga lingkod ninyo ay magpapatuloy o Diyos sa paglilingkod, magpapatuloy sa pag-a-advance ng iyong kingdom dito sa lupa. At salamat din po ng marami sa buhay ng mga leaders and workers who are supportive to their pastors. I pray that you will also bless the works of their hands and their table will never run out of food. Ganun din sa mga miyembro o Diyos na nagiging masunurin at nagpapasakop sa kanilang mga pastor. Talangin ko sa mga hindi pa konektado sa kanilang pastor. I pray that you will enlighten them. I pray that you will show them the way that for a ship to be safe, it should be, in, it should dwell in the presence of the shepherd. Father, I also pray those who are sick right now listening to me, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of tuberculosis. I rebuke the spirit of cancer. I rebuke the spirit of 
migraine. I, I rebuke you know that spirit of uh, uh, you are bleeding, ano? Uh, yung bleeding, yung buhol sa iyong uh, matres o sa iyong uh, katawan in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it at I decree na ito po ay malusaw at bumalik sa normal ang iyong katawan at may punong-puno ng kalakasan. In the name of Jesus, I also pray lahat ng mga mag-asawa at bawat pamilya. Lord, I pray sa mga nakikinig ngayon ay maging maayos sa kanilang pagmamahalan at samahan at dalatigit sa lahat Panginoon ng kanilang pamilya ay magiging pamilyang makabiyos na maging pagpapala din sa kanilang komunidad at maging sa lipunan. Talangin ko rin, Panginoon, ang mga esodyante, lalo na mga young people ngayon. Father, I pray and rebuke that devil of depression na siyang nagiging daan at dahilan upang sila ay hindi magkaroon ng uh, maayos na perspective sa kanilang pamumuhay. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that uh, the covering of your divine presence among the young people, Father God, against the works of the enemy, against depression, or whatever it is. No weapons formed against them shall prosper. But rather, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit will be the one to touch them and make them on fire for the glory of God. And Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus na magkaroon ng uhaw, gutom, sa iyong mga salita at sa iyong presensya ang lahat ng mga lingkod mo, Panginoon, down the line sa pinaka-ordinaryong miyembro ng isang iglesia. Panginoon, dalhin niyo po kami sa malalim na aspeto at malalim na dimension ng pananalangin. Help us that prayer will become our lifestyle as what you have shown, showed us, Father God and Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that prayer will be the foundation. We will make it as a one of our foundation in following and living our Christian life on earth. Father, I also pray in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Patuloy po, Panginoon, na inyong pangunguna sa amin. I pray that you will uh, continue to make our spirit sharp and sensitive to your leading In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the fruits na amin pong narinig, that we have the mind of Christ, allow the mind of Christ, Father God, to rule and reign over our lives. And Lord, help us to always be aware, be aware of the truth that we are sons and daughters of the living God and the God of all creation, the God who made the heavens and the earth lives inside us. His Holy Spirit lives inside us. I pray, Father God, that you will open the eyes of our understanding, our spiritual mind, na maunawaan namin sa malalim na paraan na kami ay mga pinili at pinagpalang uh, mga tao na pinili at pinagpala ng Diyos. A, ho- a chosen people, a holy nation, a uh, royal priesthood, God's special possession. Father, I pray that this revelation will not just be heard by your people, but it will, uh, it will, uh, we will immerse ourselves in this truth, Panginoon, na amin pong natuklasan, that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Maraming salamat po at talangin ko rin po patuloy ang mga churches, lalong-lalo na po yung mga wala pa pong building, wala pa pong uh, lupa, In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray na kung mayroon mga kaming unang itayo at mayroon mga kaming unang uh, prioridad, Panginoon, ay ang magkaroon ng lupa because we believe that, uh, gaya ng sinasabi ng iyong lingkod, Panginoon, no land, no authority, or no uh, dominion. In the name of Jesus, I pray kung kayo po nakikinig ngayon, wala pa po kayong sariling lupa, para sa inyong iglesia at wala pang building in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and the Lord will grant you your portion so that wherever you go, ano man ang inyong gagawin, uh, you will be in authority taking charge because it is your own land given to you by God. If we remember uh, the Lord ang unang binibigay ng Diyos sa mga Israelita at tuwing sila nagkikipagdigma ay ang kanilang lupain. 
And I pray and I strongly believe some of you who are listening right now the Lord had already provided a piece of land and a building for all of us. Amen? Purihin ang Panginoon at Lord patuloy kong dalangin din ang iyong masagka ng pagpapala, the provision that comes from heaven. I pray that an open heaven, you will open the heavens for all of us who are here listening to your word. I pray in the name of Jesus in all aspects, spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, even material, the heavens are open for all of us and we will learn to spend from the pocket of Jehovah. And I pray also, Father God, uh, sa aming pag-aaral ng iyong mga salita from the beginning until the end, that you will continue to empower us, continue to enlighten us, continue to enlarge the capacity of our spirit as we receive your powerful word. I also pray, Father God, sa aming bansang Pilipinas, Lord, ito ang aming bansa na ipinagkaloob mo sa amin. We believe that you have a powerful purpose, a powerful plan for this nation. You're just waiting. You are just raising up, molding the right person who will going to lead this nation. But as of now, we pray for our president, Lord, that you will give him a clarity of direction, clarity of vision and purpose. We pray, Father God, na siya rin po ay makarinig ng iyong mga salita and you will use a servant of yours that will going to minister to him the word of God because what this nation need is none other than the powerful word of God. We rebuke the spirit of idolatry, the spirit of corruption, the spirit of murder. In the name of Jesus, we destroy you in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father God, open up the heavens. Let your people, Father God, arise. And I pray for the unity of the body of Christ. That, Lord, we will no longer pursue our own interest, but rather we will pursue the interest of the kingdom. Maraming maraming salamat po. And we pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, once again, bless the Philippines and let it rise for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. For we decree today that beginning to end for the rest of our life, for the rest of the history, the Philippines is for Christ. I also pray for our senators, congressmen, mayors, governors, even the counselors, Father God. Lahat ng mga lingkod bayan ay aming itinataas sa inyo. And I pray, Father God, those who are and engage Panginoon sa corruption Lord God they will be removed in the name of Jesus and the right righteous people and the accurate people living according to the dimension of the kingdom sila po o Diyos ay mabubuhay at lalakad Panginoon sa iyong katuwiran at sa iyong kabanalan salamat po thank you for blessing our nation thank you for a new Philippines in the name of Jesus, and Lord, we also pray for our OFW, our overseas workers, Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your divine protection and intervention over their lives. They will receive the favor of God. They will be promoted. They will be exalted, and they will be blessed because the God of the Philippines is blessing all the Filipinos all over the world. Hallelujah! Purihin ang Panginoon. And Lord, we pray that from the beginning until the end of our study, you will speak to us in a very powerful way. Let your word, Father God, be uh, a double-edged sword that will pierce our heart in order for us to be transformed. Thank you. This is our prayer, and this is what we decree, and we seal it in the powerful name of our Lord, King, and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen and Amen. Purihin ang Panginoon, palapakan natin ang Diyos. What a day to start in the presence of God. At sarap manalangin, ano? Sa presensya ng Diyos. At sa iyong mga pananalangin, kung iyo pong makikita, we are no longer asking for our own needs. But we are mindful of the needs of our nation, mindful of the needs of the Church of God mindful of the needs of, for the unity in the body of Christ, mindful of the needs, especially in the aspect of spiritual. 
Sarap po eh, manalangin eh sa Diyos. Because we know that uh, all our prayers are being heard by God and we, we, we believe na, that, that the Lord has already released His answer because what I believe, the moment the Lord received your prayer, heard your prayer, sinagot na agad ng Panginoon yan. Okay, so sinagot na nandiyan sa ating mga panalangin, just believe, expect, and receive. That's the word for the day. Okay, B-E-R, believe, Expect, receive. Okay? And, siyempre, pag na-receive mo na, Thanksgiving na ang kasunod. Okay? So, we are in the continuation of our study, the Jesus pattern of prayer. So, I've been um, going through it for several Saturdays because I strongly believe ng salita ng Diyos ay para rin po yung pagbabaon ng pako. Wala pa ako nakita ang karpentero kahit gaano kagaling na pag kanilagay ang pako isang katawan, baon agad. So pagkahataw ng ganyan, babaon ng kaunti, pukupin niya ng matagal, bago yan ay babaon ng toto. So I strongly believe, ganun din sa atin, sa spiritual, isang yung pakikinig ay hindi ho sapat upang makuha natin ang kabuuan ng mensahe ng Diyos. So kailangan ho sa ating pakikinig, Naroon po ang ating focus, naroon po ang ating spiritual or spirito na handang-handang tumanggap ng salita ng Diyos. By the way, ang sabi ng Pero sa John 6:63, the word that I have spoken, I have spoken to you is life. Okay, ang sabi niya, it is full of life and spirit. Ang sabi niya, the flesh counts for nothing, okay, but the spirit gives life. The word that we have spoken to you is full of spirit and life. So if you will study in a very deeper way, the right environment for God's word in our lives is not just the mind, it's not just the heart, but it is our spirit. Because a spirit to spirit, okay, uh, connection, you know. The word of God is a spirit, full of life and spirit. It should be placed in our spirit so that pag ang isang binhi, the seed is being planted in the right environment, then that, the, the, the seed one day will become a tree and a tree will, become, will bear so much fruit. This is the reason why marami ho na nakikinig palagi ng salita ng Diyos, hindi po na i-provide yung accurate environment for the word of God, which is the seed of God, at hindi po na i-provide, so hanggang isip, hanggang puso, pero hindi umabot sa spirito. Kaya pag wala hong, hindi po na-provide yung tamang environment para sa Word of God, hindi nakaabot sa spirito, wala hong nagiging puno, at dahil walang puno, wala rin hong bunga. A seed will remain a seed, and not, it will not grow and become a tree and bear fruit. That is why we should place the seed of God, the spirit, into our spirit. Kaya nga ho, hindi pwede nakikinig tayo na gamit lang ang ating intellectual. Kaya kung mapapasin nyo, pa nakikinig kayo gamit ang iyong intellectual ng kaisipan, may tendency na kayo po ay uh, nakikipag-ispadahan in the spirit. Okay? Sa iyong isipan, sa salita ng Diyos. Hindi rin po sa puso. Kasi pag sa puso, uh, ang puso pa pinakamadaya sa lahat. If you feel good, then the word will, uh, you know, Uh, lalago rin yan. Pero dahil sa dami ng alalahanin, okay, na chuchok yung word of God. But it, it's, if it is placed in your spirit, get ready. Because the things in the spirit are unstoppable. Kaya kahit na may problema ka, kahit marami kang alalahanin, dahil nakapenetrate ang seed of God, the word of God, into your spirit. Lahat ng alalahanin mo, remember, one of the major symbol of God's Word in the armor of God, it is the sword of the Spirit na magkabila ang talim. Kaya doon nakakat yung mga kaisipan na walang kabuluhan, doon nakakat yung anxieties, doon nakakat yung ating uh, mga ka kabalisahan. Bakit? Because the Word of God is now beginning to sprout. The Word of God is a beginning to bear fruit in our lives. Nakakaunuan po tayo, mga kapatid. Kaya nga ho, baka magtaka kayo, bakit si pastor palaging inulit-ulit? Bakit? Para ho tayo nagbabaon ng pako. Hindi ho makukuha sa isang mensahe lang yan. Pero the moment na ito po ay na, na uulit, napapakinggan, bumabaon ho ito sa ating puso't isipan at dito po tayo nagkaroon ng 
nagkakaunawat, lumalalim ho ang ating pagsunod sa Panginoon. Amen? So, as we continue the Jesus pattern of prayer, let me read to you, you know, uh, tinawag ko siya Jesus pattern of prayer, yung iba tinatawag na the Lord's Prayer. So, Matthew 6, 9 to 15, it says, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. So as what we've uh, studied in our previous uh, discussions, uh, ng Panginoon, this then is how you should pray. Sabi niya, ganito kayo manalangin. Hindi yung ito ang inyong panalangin. So, prayer is not a system. Prayer is not a format. There is no such thing as format in prayer. Prayer is, is a... Uh, prayer is a uh, pattern that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, showed us. And sa pag po sa pattern na ito, ay eh, makakapag-extract po tayo ng different principles na kung saan ito yung magiging basihan natin. Sabi ni Dr. Miles Monroe, principles are given to us by God to make our lives easy. Okay? Sabi ni Dr. Jonathan David, principles are absolute. Ibig sabihin, pag ibinigay ng Diyos sa atin ang isang prinsipyo, gawin natin yan at tiyak siya ay magre-responde sapagkat ito po ay hindi nababago. Ito ay mananatili magpakailanman. Principles works! Principles are permanent and principles are fixed. The moment you walk according to it, then the Lord of heaven will move on your favor. Now, our Father what in heaven, so it speaks of accurate relationship. So isa ho sa dapat nating tutukan, isa po sa dapat na magiging aware tayo every time we come to the Lord in prayer, make sure that our relationship with Him is accurate. Ibig sabihin, maayos, malinis, apat. At ito po ay ating aware tayo dito because many believers, many people, believers or not, they just come and approach God instead of praying. They call it prayer, but actually, they are not praying. They are just asking. They are just reporting. They are, others are declaiming that prayer is simply coming to God and uh, listening to His voice. Kaya nga, mahalaga yung relationship mo sa Diyos accurate. Why? Because, pag hindi accurate ang ating relationship sa Diyos, magiging carrier tayo ng kasalanan or carrier tayo ng mga bagay na hindi ng Diyos kinalulugdan. Again, yung tandaan, even if how sure is your victory, the moment you carry the goods of the enemy, sins, bitterness, whatever it is, the Lord will not answer our prayers. Okay? John 10.30, ano ba sinasabi nito? What is the kind of relationship? Father and son relationship. So the moment you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and King, okay, Savior, then you will be uh, given the power to become sons of God. So, father and son relationship must be accurate. And sabi ni Lord Jesus Christ sa John 10.30, I and the Father are one. So there should be, pag sabi mong accurate relationship, you should be one with God in spirit, one in purpose, One in desire and one in heart. Pag ganito ho ang ating kalalagayan sa harapan ng Diyos, sa ating paglapit sa pananalangin, we will no longer push our own agenda. But rather, we will, we will subject ourselves under His dominion and we can boldly declare to God, Lord, we are under Your disposal. Provided accurate ang ating relationship. Pangalawa, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So, another pattern and principle na magkikita natin dito sa the Jesus pattern of prayer or sa Lord's prayer is accurate worship. Isang bagay na hindi po sa atin na ipapahayag. Pus, natutuan, natutuan, at natuturuan lang po tayo na lumapit sa Panginoon. But the dynamics and the The principles ay hindi po sa atin na ibigay. 
Ang akala natin pag prayer, hala pira, hingi rito, hingi roon. Kaya nga, minsan yung iba nagbibiro na sa alip yung Panginoon, nagiging penge noon. Actually, ito hong pattern na ito, malaking tulong ko ito pag ito po ang ating susundan because this pattern made the, the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ unstoppable. Di ba ka nagtataka? Bakit si Kristo noon nasa lupa, unstoppable, immovable, unshakable, powerful? Why? One of the keys na kanya pong ipinakita at pina, pina, nire-reveal sa atin today is in the area of prayer. Siya ho ay talagang malalim sa panalangin. Ang pananalangin ho ay buhay ng Panginoong Heso Kristo. Hindi ho ito uh, basta lang ginagawa, kundi buhay niya na po ito. Life, okay, na makita natin, the life of the Lord Jesus Christ is governed with accurate relationship, accurate worship with God, which is capsulized in one word that is called prayer. Okay? So, our Father, let in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Sabing prayer, pagsamba, Tagalog, noun, pagsamba, pamiminto, sa verb, sumamba, mahalin ng labis. So, you see, when you speak about worship, it is not just singing in the Spirit alone. Singing and praising in the Spirit is just one form of worship. But if you capsulize all the things when you speak about worship, it simply means loving God above all. Mahalin ang Diyos ng labis. Kasi pag mahal mo ang Diyos ng labis, ang iyong pag-awit, ang iyong pagsayaw, ang iyong pag-express ng pagsamba sa Diyos, nagiging makabuluhan. Sapagkat ito ay ujok ng isang puso na nagmamahal sa Diyos ng labis. Sa iyong pagkatrabaho, yan na ngayon, magkatrabaho ka ng maayos sapagkat mahal mo ang Diyos ng labis at ibig mong makita ng iyong mga co-workers, ng mga office mates mo, that you are a son of God, you're a daughter of the living God, and you express and you manifest your worship to God through being excellent in your job. Nagkaw naman tayo. If you are a student, you are part of the honors, you're part of the dense lister. Bakit? Because you excel. Because you worship, because you love God above all. And the expression and manifestation of that love is being excellent in the area of your study. Nakakanoan po tayo. Karamihan sa atin nakulong saan? Sa pagiging relihiyuso na ang pagsamba ay pag-aawit lamang. Ang pagsamba ay ang pagkasalita at pagsamba at pagkataas ng pangalan ng Panginoon sa simbahan. Pag hindi po kayo aware sa salitang worship, dito po pwede tayong matrap ng kaaway doon sa isang relihiyosong pagkaunawa. Kaya mapapansin natin, maraming mga tao pag nasa loob ng church, pag sumamba, grabe, all out, and I commend that. But the question is, paglabas sa simbahan, hindi na po makapagsamba ng all out. That is why they are so excited waiting for Sunday. Why? Because that's the only time they can express their uh, worship to God. For me, it is inaccurate. Why? Because mas marami tayong oras na sambahin ang Diyos sa trabaho natin, sa eskwelahan natin, sa ating opisina, or in the domain where God had positioned us. What does it mean? Kung saan tayo ng Diyos inilagay, doon tayo sumamba sa Kanya, hindi sa pamamagitan ng awit, hindi sa pamamagitan ng pagtaas ng kamay at pagsigaw, kundi patunayan natin, i-manifest natin ang ating tunay na pagsamba sa Diyos sa pagiging eksilente, sa pagpasok ng maaga, sa pagbibigay ng pagdi-deliver ng mga expectations sa atin at ang isang tunay na nagmamahal sa Diyos at tunay na mananampal tayong sumasamba sa Diyos, He always exceed the expectations of people. Nagkakanawan tayo, mga kapatid. Huwag po tayong matrap doon sa isang aspeto lamang ng pagsamba. Okay, ganyan ang sinasabi ko palagi. Maraming mga worship team, worship team members. Pagdating sa church, napakahusay tumugtog, napakahusay magpaawit, pero pag uwi sa bahay, hindi naman nagugas ng pinggan. Okay, that is not worship. It will uh, downgrade your worship in the church. 
pag nauwi ka sa pagiging relihiyoso, yung ibang mga young people, ginagawa na nilang katuwiran na hindi mo nang magugas ang plato. Bakit mag-worship kami ngayon? Meron kaming worship team practice. E pag nagugas ako ng plato, baka mapas mo yung kamay. That is not worship. Ulitin ko, singing, praising God in the church is just one form of worship. But excel, you excel in your job, you excel in your study, you excel in the area of business, you, you, you deal business with integrity, that is your worship to God. Kaya nga, palagi sinasabi ng aming mentor, maraming kristyano on fire pag linggo, brown out pag lunes hanggang sabado. What kind of spiritual spirituality meron ka? It is inconsistent. That is why kasama sa prayer, every day tayo nagpe-prayer, every time tayo nagpe-prayer, kasama ang worship. Because hallowed be thy name. We worship God in spirit and in truth. We worship God. We love God above all. Mahalin siya ng labis. The feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. Great admiration or devotion. While we are worshiping God, our spirit is being enveloped and saturated by His divine presence. Where confidence, joy, freedom, and power floods our soul. Di ba napakasarap? Abang sinasamba natin ang Diyos, abang tinataas natin ang Diyos, hindi lamang sa ating mga tinig, hindi lamang sa ating mga kamay, kundi maging sa ating trabaho, maging sa mga pagkakataon na kung saan doon tayo inaasahan na mag-deliver, we deliver it with excellence. The joy, confidence, freedom, and power will flood our soul. Babaha. Sa ating buhay, ang kumpiyansa, kagalakan, kapayapaan, kalayaan. Di ba ito napakaligaya maging kapangyarihan? These are the powerful tools that many of God's people missed. Number three, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, accurate relationship. Hallowed be your name, accurate worship. Number three, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Accurate rulership and kingship of Christ being established over our lives. So dito makita natin na napakalagaw. Kung mayroon mang pagsumakita ng higit sa lahat, ang isang mananampalataya, yan ay ang establish ang paghahari ng Diyos sa kanyang buhay. Because the moment we are governed and ruled by our God, What will happen? He is the one. He will be the one to provide all our needs. He will be the one to protect us. He will be the one to intervene in all our affairs in life. At ito po ang konsepto ng harian ng Dios. The moment the person received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and King, his Savior, ano pong kasunod? He belongs now to a kingdom. And a kingdom is being ruled by a king. It doesn't belong to a country. He belongs to a kingdom. And kingdom is being ruled by a king. And once the believer, once a citizen is obedient, submissive to the rulership of the king, then the king is obliged to provide all his needs. The king is obliged to protect him. The king is obliged to give the citizens best life that they need to have because the reflection because the citizens are the reflection of what kind of king is the one governing them. Kaya nga ho, pag ang buhay natin ay pinagtala, reflection niyan ng klase ng hari na namumuno sa atin. That is why it is very sad. It is so sad to see marami hong nagkiklaim na believer of Christ. Pero pag tinignan mo ang buhay, hindi nagre-reflect ng pinagpala at buhay na ganap at kasesya. Why? Because they fail to establish the accurate rulership and kingship of Christ over their lives. Mga kapatid, this is the word of God for all of us today. Maybe you're struggling in the area of your finances. You ask yourself, is God, is Jesus the God and King of my finances? Maybe you're struggling in the area of your emotion. Tanungin mo, is Christ okay, the king and ruler of my emotions? O may iba sa atin, masyadong emotional. Kunting offense lang, parang akala mo, dinagana na ng sandibutan. Yung iba, inggitero. Maraming naiinggit. 
Bakit ka maiinggit? Eh, meron kang sariling, ano, eh, meron kang sariling talent, meron kang sariling potential, meron kang sariling gift. Kaya nga, without the Word of God, may my people perish because of lack of knowledge. You don't need to compare yourself with others. If others are succeeding, rejoice with them. Instead of, of rejoicing, you are envious sa mga kapatid mo, sa ano po nangyayari, sa mga tao na nagiging successful. You are hurting yourself. You know, envy is very dangerous. When I read the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 37, when the brothers of Joseph, okay, ay uh, narinig, nakita nila that Jacob loved Joseph more than them, and then Jacob made a robe for him, and then Joseph had a dream, shared it with them, saan sila nagalit? Nagsimula sila sa inggit, envy. At ang kasunod, ang sabi nila, patayin natin siya. Nakita niyo, envy will birth anger. Anger, if, not, if it is not dealt accurately, it will birth hatred. And hatred birth murder. Diyan sila nagsimula. Pero anong pinakaugat? Envy. Ito pong uh, pagiging uh, maingitin. You have to be careful, mga kapatid. The moment you allow the rulership of Christ in your life, according to the Jesus pattern of prayer, you are giving yourself security that the king will deal with you fairly. He is a God of justice. Maybe some of you, you are experiencing this kind of uh, feeling that people are, you know, they're envious of your success. Just continue serving the king. Because we are not living for people, we are living for the King. And everything and everything we do, we are giving Him glory, honor, and pleasure. Not people. Bakit masyadong affected yung iba sa atin? Why? Because, ang nakikita natin kasi yung tao, pero yung hari nating Diyos na nandun sa langit, na ispirito din natin nakikita, kaya mas feel mo yung ginagawa ng tao kaysa ginagawa ng Diyos. But the moment... You learn how to establish the rulership and kingship of Christ in your life, you will begin to sense in your spirit that in everything you do, every time you accomplish something and you honor it to the King of kings and to the Lord of lords, something in your spirit na nag-validate at nag-asabing God is pleased with what you are doing. I remember that what Jonathan David says, you will be hearing lots of voices in this world. The voice of the devil, the voice of your wife, the voice of your husband, the voice of people, even the voice of believers. And there is also the voice of God. Sabi ni Dr. Jonathan David, pag kayo ay nakarinig ng boses ng ibang tao, kahit sinong tao yan, never believe. Never believe it. Rather, believe only and follow the voice of God. Maraming tao who ay uh, kahit gaano aganda ng iyong ginagawa, they will still find, they want, they will going to find, they will find uh, things that uh, to discredit, discredit, they will discredit your uh, work. Look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Anong ginagawa niya? Feeding the hungry, healing the sick, preaching the kingdom of God accurately. Hindi lahat masaya. Raising the dead. Imagine mo, patay binuhay, hindi ka ba masaya? But again, raising the dead. But still, there are people who are envious. The Pharisees, the scribes, okay, the teachers of the law. Who are these people? These are believers in our time. That is why you have to be careful. Kaya nga yung establishing, is, uh, the accurate uh, leadership and uh, Rulership of the Lord Jesus Christ. Kingship must be established, fully established in your life, in my life. Why? Because whether you like it or not, hindi na ho pinag-uusapan dito ngayon 
kung sinong gumagawa ng tama. Kasi kahit tama ang ginagawa mo, mayroon pa rin mga taong hindi ka gusto. That's why you have to be careful. You need to establish the rulership of Christ so that whatever happens, whatever people tells you, you will not listen to it, but you will not listen to the voice of the king. And the moment you do the voice of the king, the command of the king, whatever you do, wherever you go, whatever you do, he will be the one to bless and he will be the one to give you increase. Malinaw po, mga kapatid. Ano pa ho? Number four. Okay. Our Father in Heaven, accurate relationship, hallowed be your name, accurate worship. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it, is, as it is in heaven. Accurate rulership and kingship of Christ being established in our lives. Number four, give us this day our daily bread. Accurate stewardship of God's word, fully dependent on God for our daily spiritual nourishment. Tandaan natin mga kapatid, everything that comes from God are spiritual. Material, financial, and physical things are just byproduct of the spiritual condition that we have inside us. Tandaan natin yan mga kapatid. Kung anong kalalagayan mong physical, yan ay produkto lamang ng iyong kalalagayang spiritual. Malinaw ho, Kaya napakahalaga na ikaw ay dapat maging matatag at mayaman spiritually. And the Lord, para sa mga explanation ko sa mga nakaraang pag-aaral natin, sabi ni Lord Jesus Christ sa Matthew 4.4, Jesus answered, it is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. What does it mean? Pag sinasabi bread alone, it speaks of the physical bread. But on every word, Okay, what will make a person live? The word that comes from the mouth of God. So, by translation, the uh, word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. The now word, the fresh word, ito ang kailangan ng maraming mananampalataya. Kaya sabi ni Lord, give us this day our deliverance. In the pattern of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must be good stewards of God's fresh and now word. We are fully dependent on God for our daily spiritual nourishment. Kailangan nung araw-araw humihingi tayo sa Diyos ng ating pagkain spiritual. Why? Kung mayroon man tayong unang pakainin, watch me now and listen to this. Kung mayroon man tayong unang pakainin sa buhay natin, sa bawat araw, pinakauna, walang iba kundi ang salita kundi ang ating espiritu at pakainin natin ang salita ng Diyos. Ang salita ng Diyos, hindi na lutuin. Nakaredy na yan. Kunin mo na lang yung accurate, fresh, and now word of God. At yan ang ipapakain mo sa espiritu mo. The moment your spirit becomes strong, the moment your spirit is strengthened, then you are ready to fight and you are ready to conquer any battle that you are about to face every day. Mga kapatid, nung ito ay aking pinag-aaralan, ako po ay magkahalong lungkot at kagalakan. Bakit kalungkutan? Sapagkat napakatagal, hindi po nahimay sa atin. Pagkos, ang turo sa atin, basta just pray and giving us formula, giving us acronym, di masama, pero kulang. Kagalakan, bakit? Because the Lord is a God who revealed Himself to those who are thirsty and hungry for His presence. I know you're listening right now, kasama po kayo sa tinutukoy na uhaw at gutom sa presensya ng Diyos at sa salita ng Diyos. Can you reveal sa atin ito ng Panginoon? God is a spirit. And you ask from Him a daily bread. What do you expect that God will give you? Pandizal? What do you expect that God will give you, Tapsilog? No. He will going to give you His Spirit, so what will, he, what will God give you? Spiritual nourishment. Because the moment you feed your spirit at the first, first thing in the day, in a day, first things first, the araw na ito, you feed your spirit with what? With the now word of God. Then it will become strong. As your physical body, your flesh, is about to wage war against your spirit, hindi ito kailang mamananalo sapagkat una mo nang napatibay at napakain ng iyong espiritu. Bakit maraming mananampalataya ay uh, nagiging karnal at nagiging mahina pagdating sa atake ng laman? Alam niyo bakit? 
because they fail in this area. Give us this day our daily bread. Instead of feeding their spirit first, they feed the flesh first. Feeding the flesh is simply weakening the spirit. But feeding your spirit is simply weakening your flesh. Kaya nga yung fasting. Napansin yung fasting? Do not fast because you ask, you want to ask something from God. You fast because you know the meaning of it. The accurate meaning of fasting is simply strengthening your spirit and weakening the flesh. Nagkaon naman ba tayo? Kaya nga, kung ang pag-uusapan ay daily bread, God is not talking about the physical bread. Sa Tagalog o sa bread sa Pinoy, hindi ho tap silog ito. Ang tinutukoy rito yung now word, fresh word na galing sa Diyos para unang-una mong pakainin ang Espiritu mo sa paggising mo pa lang sa umaga, para pagpangon mo, pag-engage mo sa mundo, spiritually strong, spiritually strengthened, spiritually established ka, ano mang pagsubok ang kakaharapin mo, walang tatalo sa iyo. Nagkaintindihan tayo. Have you asked God for your daily bread? Hindi weekly ha, daily. Alinaw, every day you have to receive your daily bread from God. Ano pa? And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sins against us. I've explained this already. Accurate fellowship with the brethren. Mga kapatid, whether we like it or not, even how much we love each other, time will come that there will be misunderstanding, there will be offense, there will be uh, trouble among us, especially in the area of relationship and our emotions. Kasama yan sa Jesus pattern of prayer. To forgive, ask God to forgive our sins, kasi pwedeng tayo ang magkamali at magkasala, at magpatawad din naman sa mga nagkasala sa atin. There's a clear biblical reference in Colossians 3.13. It says, Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Nakita po natin, mga kapatid. Magpatawad tayo Katulad ng pagpapatawad ng Diyos sa atin. God never and did not sin against us. We, in, 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 uh, in contrary, we sinned against Him. Kaunawan tayo. Walang kasalanan si Kristo. Bumabasa ko rin sa Kalbaryo, naging kasalanan upang ang kasalanan mo at kasalanan ko'y bayaran. Hindi niya binilang kung gaano katindi ang kasalanan mo at kasalanan ko. Matindi man ito, kayang-kaya itong patawarin ng Diyos. That is why ang kanyang challenge sa atin, to keep ourselves clean and to keep ourselves from hitting and uh, attacking our brethren, is to always provide a room of forgiveness to those who sins against us. Peter one day approached Jesus at ang sabi, how many times should I forgive my brother? Seven times? The Lord Jesus Christ said to him, I am not telling you seven times, but 70 times seven, which is 490 in a day. What does it mean? Dapat araw-araw, hindi ho nauubos yung ating puso, yung ating pagpapatawad sa mga nagkakasala sa atin. What does it mean? It simply means that we should always keep our lives clean. We should always keep our spirit clean against offense, bitterness, anger, even hatred. Mga kapatid, hindi ni Kristo yutos kung hindi niya ginawa. Na nasa Krusya, Luke 23-34a, Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He was being mocked. He was being crucified without sin. Instead na siya magalit, instead na siya gumanti. 
ang kanyang unang binitawan ay ang pagpapatawad. Huwag na po natin hintayin ang mga nagkasala sa atin na humingi ng tawad. We can forgive them, set them free, and set ourselves free also. Mga kapatid, kung ngayon po ay mayroon pa ho dala-dala baon na hindi pagpapatawad sa ating mga puso, I think this is the best time to release forgiveness to all our offenders, intentional man or unintentional, safe na safe ang, pag magpa ang magpatawad. At nalalagay sa alanganin at sa pingit ng kapahamakan ang isang taong may daladalang galit, puot, at hindi pagpapatawad sa mga nagkakasala sa kanya. Iwasan din po natin ang manira ng kapwa. Because, lagi natin tandaan, God created man in His own image and likeness. We are free to speak. No one will hinder you and no one will, you know, imprison you kung ano gusto mong sabihin. Pero sa batas ng Diyos, Kung malaya tayo magsalita dito sa lupa, ang sabi ng Panginoon, lahat ng iyong sinasabi ay siya rin gagamitin ng Diyos sa panghatol sa iyo sa araw ng paghuhukom. A very good reminder for all of us because itong ating bibig, itong ating dila ay kung magsalita ay walang habas. Kung magpuri, walang habas. Pero kung manira ng kapa, walang habas din. We need to be careful. Ano po ba? ang ating sinasabi. Tiyakin natin ang ating mga sinasabi. Tiyakin natin ang ating mga pananalita. Sapagkat maliwanag pa sa sikat ng araw, sinasabi ni Kristo sa kanyang salita. Ang mga salitang binibitawan mo ay siya rin gagamitin ng Diyos na panghatol sa iyo sa araw ng paghuhukom. Kung wala tayong sinisiraan, Kung wala pa yung sinasabing hindi maganda, pagkos, pagpapala, pagpupuri, at ang sabi sa Ephesians 4.29, kung kayo magsalita, tiyakin ninyo na pagpapala ito at may napupulot na aral ang mga nakikinig. If that's a kind of message, if that's the kind of uh, word na lumalabas sa ating mga bibig, sa isang araw, pagharap natin sa Panginoon, tatanggap din tayo ng gantimpala. And the other way around, the moment we keep on, you know, slandering, destroying one's reputation, one day, the Lord will also ruin and destroy your reputation. It's a principle. What you sow is what you reap. I love that teaching, as in the po ni Dr. Ani Pastor Ed Lapis. In the sowing and reaping principle, If you destroy the reputation of one person, you will also reap devastation of your, of your reputation. Because what you sow is what you reap. Kung may mga naninira, may mga naninira sa inyo, huwag niyo pong gantihan ng paninira sa kanila. Kasi kung anong iyong ginawa, yan ang iyong pananim. Sa mga naninira sa iyo, aani po sila ng paninira din mula sa iba para sirain din ang kanilang sarili. Ikaw na sinisiraan, anong gagawin mo? Ang sabi ng Bible, love your enemy. Ibig sabihin, kung may naninira sa'yo, huwag mong gantihan ng paninira. Magkos gantihan mo ng pananalangin para sa kanila. At dahil yun ang iyong tinanim, may mga taong gagamitin ang Diyos para ipagpanalangin ka rin. Hindi ka lang may pagpanalangin, kundi maging ikaw ay pagpapalain. Huwag po natin gantihan ng masama ng masama. Gantihan natin ng masama ng mabuti. If people think that they are superior than you, then let them dream that they are superior than you. But in reality, God knows that you are really superior over them. Marami yung insecure na mga tao na kung saan, pagka hindi ho natin mapaghari ang Diyos at hindi po tayo nag-govern doon sa accurate fellowship with the brethren. Even among us, mayroon pong mga ganitong kaisipan. Kaya nga ho, let's be careful. Let us love one another. Let us honor 
Okay, respect one another. If others cannot do that for you, just give respect because respect begets respect, love begets love, honor begets honor. But those who dishonor, disrespect, and hate others, that is their seed, and they are sowing the seed that one day they will also be the one to harvest what they have planted. But for us, mga kapatid na nakikinig ngayon, sabi ng Lord, if your enemy is thirsty, feed him. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is thirsty, give him a cup of water for a drink. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Sa mga sandaling ito, dito muna tayo titigil, pagpalain tayo lahat ng Panginoon, at nawa sa araw na ito, maroon po tayong natutunan, na huwag po tayong magsasawa sa pagkapatawad sa mga nagkasala sa atin. Kagaya po ng ating Diyos na wala rin pong sawa sa pagkapatawad sa atin. A forgiving heart is a merry heart. Ulitin ko, ang pusong mapagpatawad ay isa rin pong pusong masaya. Ang Diyos ang magpala sa ating lahat. Kung meron kayong mga prayer requests, please do send to Ambassadors for Christ FB page or direct na sa aking mabangay, Cora Bumbalis Raman. We love to pray for you. Ingat po kayo palagi. Palain tayo lahat ng Diyos. Lumago tayo sa ating pagmamahal sa Diyos by possessing accurate relationship with Him, accurate worship, accurate rulership and kingship of Christ being established in our lives, accurate stewardship of God's holy word, accurate fellowship with the brethren. Mahal tayong lahat ng Diyos at magpatuloy tayo sa paglilingkod sa Kanya habang tayo ay nabubuhay. God bless us all. Your table will never run out of food. There will always be food at your table. The works of your hands will be blessed by the Lord. Wherever you go, whatever you do, God be with you. This is my prayer in Jesus' most powerful name. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom!